everybody today. Hope you guys had a good weekend. Last week, we were working on the half guard. So we talked about our primary use of half guard as beginners, which is primarily as a recovery tool to get out of a negative bottom position. But then once we were able to do that, we talked about how we can use the underhook to at least attack some things, provided that we have that underhook. Today, we're going to be working on the butterfly guard. And this week, our focus is going to be again on using the butterfly guard as a beginner. The reason for that is because the butterfly guard is a very important position, but it's a very low percentage submission. What I mean is the butterfly guard inherently provides us with, with less control of our opponent because we don't have as much lever control on our opponent. The butterfly guard itself is extremely simple. The butterfly guard is when our opponent is sitting on their knees and we're sitting on our bottom. This is the butterfly guard. It can take a couple of different forms. This is just a very symmetrical variation where I'm literally just sitting on my butt like a butterfly stretch. That's why we call it the butterfly guard. It can also take a more asymmetrical variation where I'm on a hip. Okay, You may see people playing butterfly guard like this. We're going to be focusing on our symmetrical variation of the butterfly guard because our primary focus with the butterfly guard is developing hooks and an understanding of maintaining inside positioning on our opponent's body. Now, let's first talk about the limitations of the butterfly guard. The butterfly guard is fairly commonly used in nogi because it's used as an entry to other leg positions, namely X guards and leg entries, meaning leg locks. In the gi, it's a little bit harder to use the guard. And the reason for that is because if I'm sitting here playing butterfly guard, nothing really stops this person from just standing up. And now I'm not playing butterfly guard anymore. We would call this a seated guard. Okay? So again, when they're sitting, butterfly guard. When they're standing, you're in a seated guard. So let's make sure we understand the difference between those. Now, again though, our focus is going to be on developing hooks. We will be looking at some attacks from the butterfly guard, but I just want you guys to be aware as to why we're not really focusing on like a big module dedicated to the butterfly guard. We're going to first start off with a very simple sticky hook drill. Okay? This drill is actually going to see us starting on our back, and our opponent's going to be on their feet. So we're going to be in like a good knee elbow connection here. My knees are as close as I can get them to my chest. I keep my feet staring at my opponent. Uh, I like to think about there being eyes on my feet. Okay, I know it sounds weird, but bear with me. I want you to imagine like you have eyes on your feet. If your opponent is not being stared at, then you're not playing guard. So my eyes right now are staring at him. If my feet are down here, the eyes on my feet are not staring at him anymore. If they're over here, same thing. If they're over here, same thing. If my eyes are staring anywhere else but my opponent, then you're going to get your guard passed. So I always keep my eyes or the bottoms of my feet facing my opponent. Okay, my hands are in front of my shins here, and I'm playing my guard. So from this recumbent position, I'm going to get inside position with my feet, meaning my limbs are going to connect in between my opponent's limbs, providing me with control of the inside space, but more importantly, lever control here. For this first drill, 30 seconds, my partner's going to have hands on knees. They're going to simply start moving around my body. My goal is to maintain inside position and keep sticky hooks. He's just going to simply circle, see how he's lifting his legs, He's testing. He's not trying to like run away and disengage. If he runs backwards, well, now we've broken the drill. So let's stay engaged. OK, I'm just going to keep my hooks in. If I lose a hook for whatever reason, get it back as fast as you can. Keep your hands up. Keep your head up. If I'm dragging my head on the floor, my body's going to get bent, and now I'm not going to be able to stay connected. So I should be on the lower part of my back. Okay, just like this. And keep the hands as tight as you can. If you need to, you can use your elbows to help you pivot. So as he's walking around me, see, I can kind of use my elbows to help me move my hips. I never do this and move my hips. We never put our feet on the ground to move our hips. Why? Because if my foot's on the ground, I'm no longer looking at him with that eyeball on the bottom of my foot. Right? I always want to keep my eyes facing him here. Okay? So that's going to be 30 seconds, guys. Very simple. I want you to focus on maintaining inside space and keeping your hooks tight. Any questions? Let's go. One, two. All right. Any questions about that first drill? I just want to make sure you're clear. You were not actually in butterfly guard during that drill. We would just call that a recumbent guard, a guard where you're laying on your back. That's not really a named guard, necessarily. The important part of that drill, though, is developing sticky hooks. That is essential for your butterfly guard. And that drill is one of the easiest ways to practice maintaining sticky hooks. Now let's do a very specific butterfly guard drill. We're going to be doing a lift and move drill for our butterfly guard. 
This drill is gonna take the form of a line drill, meaning we're gonna be moving down the mat in a straight line with our partner. Um, I'll show how we're gonna set that up here in a second, but let me demonstrate the drill itself. We're gonna be starting now in our butterfly guard. So my partner's sitting on their knees. I'm gonna be on my bottom here. My feet are gonna stay nice and sticky and hooked in between their thighs. Again, inside position, okay? My limbs are in between my opponent's limbs at all times. Now, for this drill, what we're trying to practice is the ability to lift our opponent, get our weight underneath them, and then move our opponent. My hands can do two different things. Your sort of classic variation would be double unders, with a body lock here. If your partner is maybe a little wider and that's a hard grip to achieve, no problem, just grab double collars instead. Okay? Both of these are totally fine. So either double collars or double unders with a body lock. I'm gonna demonstrate what the drill's gonna look like, just one rep and then we'll break it down. I'll just start with the double collars for simplicity. Here we go. So I lifted my partner, I got my weight underneath them, and then I kicked my partner forward and moved myself up. If you notice, I'm now a little bit further down the mat, okay? So, resetting back to this position here, we're gonna start with feet on the inside position. Again, the hands can either be collars or double unders. You can choose either one. I'll do a rep with double unders. So both my arms are under, palm to palm, body lock here. Now, once I'm in this position, I'm gonna lay to my back. I keep my knee elbow connection though. If I lay to my back and I break this, now my partner's just gonna be able to pass because I don't have the knee elbow connection. So I have body lock, I lay on my back and I lift. Once I've lifted my partner, I'm gonna kick both my feet down and follow. Kick and then scoop my butt up with a butt scoop and follow my partner, okay? So one more time. I'll do the double collars this time so that way I can talk to you guys a little easier. Same thing, keep your knee elbow connection. I'm gonna go back, lift my partner, kick and then scoot up all at the same time. When I do this one, guys, I need the top person play the role of a good training partner. Don't like limp, don't fight it. Just stay compact in your kneeling position. And when your partner kicks you backwards, land on your knees, not like flat on your belly. Don't do this, okay? So lift, kick, slide up. Lift, kick, slide up. Alrighty guys. So does anybody have any questions on this drill? I'll, I'll explain how, to, how we're gonna set this up here in a minute. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and now work on an actual sweep with the butterfly guard. That particular drill that you just did, that drill is going to come into play next class because next class we're gonna talk about a back take where we elevate our partner and use our hooks to take their back. And then we'll also talk about using this to enter to X guard next class. But for today, we're just using that drill to help us develop the ability to lift somebody's weight, move our hips underneath them, which is just good all around for jiu-jitsu. You want to be able to do that with any position in jiu-jitsu. Now let's look at our basic over-under sweep from the butterfly guard. This is kind of your quintessential butterfly sweep. So let's check this out. Uh, we'll go from this direction first. I'll show slow motion. Here we go. So this is our basic over-under sweep. So the over-under of this sweep's name comes from the positioning of our arms. We're gonna start the exact same way as we were before. So I'm in my butterfly guard. A Couple notes on the positioning for butterfly guard. The closer you can keep your feet to your groin, the better, just because it helps limit access to inside position on yourself. Okay, so if I can keep my feet all the way in, that's great. I wanna keep a slight lean forward so that my spine is acting like a frame to prevent them from pushing me backwards. If I'm like this, now when they push me, it's very hard to stay up because I'm relying on muscular endurance as opposed to structure of my spine, okay? My hands, again, are always floating above my feet because my hands need to protect these. If they start to grab onto my legs, they can easily put me on my back. So I'm always protecting my feet. So we're gonna start to get inside position with our hooks, and now I'm gonna scoot close. I want you to be able to do this without needing to use your hands, okay, just using a butt scoot, but if you need to, you can grab onto the collars to pull yourself closer, or grab onto a wrist to pull yourself closer. And now that we have a good connection here, I'm gonna to start to get the over-under grips with my arms. So this is kind of like a seat belt from the back mount. You're just in front of them, okay? We're going one arm over, one arm under, but instead of focusing on controlling their chest, we're controlling one arm and their back. So I'm gonna reach over his arm here and underneath his armpit to 
to his back. You can keep this arm nice and high, especially in no gi. In the gi, you can also grab onto their belt and the mater material behind it. But I don't want to keep my arm lazy and disconnected, so I keep it either super tight or connected to something. Now that I have this connection, I want to keep my head on the shoulder that's the same side as the over. Why? Because I'm taking away his ability to post with this hand, meaning that's the side I'm going to sweep him to. So if I keep my head on the other side, can anyone see what's the issue here? I still trapped this arm. Does anybody see why is the sweep have a lower chance of working now just because my head is on this side? What is it? He can use his head, very good. If I sweep him, he can use his head. I don't recommend this necessarily as a beginner, but we can use our head to post on the ground, right? If I try to sweep him, he can use his head to post, uh, and now it's hard to sweep him. So my head is always beating his head. So now his head can't get to the floor. So again, I have my over under position. You can play around with whichever grip combination you want, either a high under hook or a belt grip. Now, Keeping my feet connected to this inside position, I'm going to start to drop my head and shoulders down to the floor. Similar to our rollover sweep that we did last class, where from half guard I dove underneath my opponent. From here, I'm going to fall over like a tree. I never do this, because now I pull his weight on top of me. Number one, I've broken my knee elbow connection. Number two, I've placed his weight way too far away on my levers, so it's hard to lift him. And number three, he can just stand up now, and now I'm not in a good spot at all. So I never lay flat on my back here. I'm going to fall to my shoulder. As I fall to my shoulder, I'm going to drive off my toes. I'll show that in a different angle here in a moment. I'm going to drive off my toes, lift his hips up, and start turning until I can come on top. Now immediately, I post my hands. But look how I maintain my feet in between his, his thighs here. Now, I'm not going to necessarily score points yet because I haven't taken my feet out of his guard. But I'm going to keep my feet here to prevent him from putting me in guard. Because I have my feet hooking his thighs, he can't put me in a half guard or a quarter guard. So when I'm ready, I'm going to start to slide my knees backwards and just extract my legs and then keep everything tight. Suck your feet in, try to climb up nice and high like we looked at for our mount module a couple weeks ago. So let's look real quick at how I'm using the toes to drive off the floor. Okay, So I'm going to do this one pantomime because it's hard to see without uh, if somebody is there. Um, so as I start to do this sweep, so I have my over under position. I'm holding the overhook on my left side, so my right foot is going to be the initial lift. So I'm using the underhook and my right foot to lift, and I'm going to start to essentially go into our half Granby position, where I come up here. So I'm framing with my spine, shoulder, and knee on the mat to create a tripod effect. My hips are high, I'm elevating, and my left foot is driving off the floor. Okay, so again, I'm here tight, I drop to my shoulder, and I lift. But notice how I don't break my knee elbow connection. If I start to fall, I'll show this from a side view. If I start to fall and then I straighten my leg instead, now look at the issue I've created. I've opened that space. Let's see what might happen. If I try to do this, and again, you'll encounter false positives. If you do this against like a, a day one wipeout, whatever, you can just kind of like just do this and they'll fall over, right? Because they don't know what they're doing. But if you do this against anyone who's good, the second you extend that leg, you give them a free pass. So don't extend your legs, OK? Keep everything balled up. So again, I'll do a pantomime slow. I'm here. As I drop, I extend. OK, see how I keep the hook, keep the knee elbow connection, and then I come up on top. OK? Let's see this again. Uh, I'll show it from the opposite side. So we're here. I get my connection. I start to drop. Lift, 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 lift. Come up to the top and then finish in good base. Okay, I'll show once more from the rear without talking. Here we go. Start disconnected, guys. I want you to work on sort of like hand fighting and pummeling to get to the inside position. So I might start here. And then start to finish. Try to get to a nice high mount, stepping on their hips. All right, guys, this is your basic over under sweep. Any questions? All right, let's go one, two. Does anybody have any questions about this sweep? Really simple. Focus on staying compact. Don't extend your legs too far. LJ? Uh, just a, a question. Maybe it'll help with this. Uh, what do you do with the closer you sweep to your toes, the safer uh, equipment will help you push off your shape and the right leg be on it? Yeah, so when we're. 
when we're turning and we're pushing off our foot, I want you to focus on driving off the ball of your foot, okay? Because I don't want to go dead foot. It's hard to push off the ground using the back of my foot. So when I start to turn, I go tippy toes on the mat. So really this comes down to developing the, the flex and like arch of your foot, being able to stay like pretty tightly coiled like this. So like a good, a good stretch would be to try to stay. I walk on my tippy toes, so like this is natural for me to be able to do this. So it might take you some time to be able to stand like this arched on your foot. So that's the idea though. When I'm, when I'm hitting this sweep, I come up onto that arch on my foot here. So that way it's easier to drive off the floor because I have more of a point of base as opposed to trying to push off the top of the foot. All right, you guys. Let's just do um, a couple more little details here with some grip setups, specific with the gi. Um, this particular variation is universal, gi and no gi. Um, that's why it's nice, especially in no gi, the butterfly guard, again, it will be used to transition to other positions. X guard, a lot of leg entries, things like this. But in the gi, we have a couple of specific gi grips that we can use. Namely, if we run into the situation where our opponent is grabbing one of our pants. So if he's starting to grab one of my pants here, I can use this grip to keep him now anchored, and this sleeve grip is substituting my overhook because this grip is gonna prevent him from being able to post. So again, if I'm here, maybe we're hand fighting, he grabs one of my pants, I'm gonna counter grab. And now look, I'm gonna come in and sweep him all the same. So because he's anchoring onto me, I'm essentially gonna punish him and force him to stay anchored. Even when he would like to post, I'm not gonna let him do it. I'm gonna sweep him. Same underhook situation, but I'm just holding onto that sleeve, okay? So, we'll go this way so you guys can actually see that grip. So I'm here, we're hand fighting, he grabs, so I grab his sleeve, see? And so now, same thing. I scoot in, I get the grip, and I sweep, okay? Another option, just because I, I want you guys to also be a little bit like picky when it comes to pant grips. What I mean is like, we never want people to grab our pants, so I want you to also work a grip break variation too. So we're here, he grabs. I want you to work this sleeve grip, kick and break, return to inside position, and now look, you have this sleeve grip. We're gonna come in and get our grip here. Same exact sweep. Keep this tight. This is the lever control that I need in order to sweep him. So I have, remember our concept, I have lever control, and now I shift his center of gravity, sweep him and come up on top. So I want you to play around with these two options. Finally, I wanna detail just a slight finish variation. While it's like awesome if you can finish directly in the mount, because that would be a really great scoring situation. Two points for the sweep, four points for the mount. Sometimes you're, you're gonna lose the hooks. They're trying to pummel their legs. They wanna get back to inside position. So also understand how to get to side control out of this butterfly sweep. Honestly, this is more commonly done, right, when you sweep, so whatever, it doesn't matter what variation. But when I go to sweep him, as I start to come up, being able to just finish here in our side control position, okay? This is when I'm high up like this, this is what we call scarf hold sometimes, all right? But from here, you can just start to step back and just re-center in side control. All I was doing with that, and I'll show that from the uh, opposite angle. Uh, let's go this way. As I swept him, I just, kept my hips on the side that I was sweeping him towards. So I swept him towards my left, and as I was coming up, I kept my hips on that left side. So that way, I never had to interact with his guard at any point. I immediately just came up to top position. So let's play around with some of these options, guys. I'll just show those grip options one more time. Um, so for that first one, let's say he's grabbing onto my pant. I'll counter grip. And then I come up on top. The second option, I'm gonna do a kick break. A kick break is just any time you kick your leg and pull the sleeve in order to break grip. That's a powerful grip break. We love doing this, okay? So maybe I'm here, boom. Maybe this time, I'll finish in that scarfold position, okay? So let's play around with these options, guys, just to make it a little bit more dynamic with the uh, butterfly guard and the gi. Any questions? All right, hey, real quick, I wanted to also tell you, go home, Look up the athlete Adam Wardzinski. He's Polish, so Seth and I are Polish, representing Poland. So uh, look up Adam Wardzinski. He is far and away the number one athlete with Butterfly Guard. He destroys everybody using Butterfly Guard. So check it out, guys. All right, let's go ahead and get back to your partner, and let's finish up. One, two. All right, very good. Any last questions about 
using the butterfly guard or using this over under sweep. At the, when we're using that sleeve grip, technically I guess you wouldn't call it an over under grip or an over under sweep, you would just kind of call it the butterfly sweep. Um, just a couple quick notes here guys. The butterfly guard again, while it's a good position, it, you know, we have attacks from there, you're gonna find out as soon as we start specific training, the second your opponent stands, you're not in butterfly guard anymore. It can be hard to control. Okay, it's a lot more of an old school style guard. However, the concepts behind the guard are absolutely vital for other higher level guards. Okay, like we're gonna look at next class, we can use this to uh, transition to things like X guard, which is a pretty much guaranteed sweeping position. Um, the butterfly guard, it favors people with shorter limbs. So if you're a little stockier, this is a great guard to use. The reason for that is because you're able to stay coiled up and balled up a little bit more. All right, like I'm not very good at butterfly guard just because my legs are so long. I have longer levers. So it's harder for me to start to lift people because I literally have a longer thing that I need to use to start to lift them, right? If you're short and stocky, it's really easy to stay tight and connected. So it's easier to use the butterfly guard. So uh, use this to your advantage, all right? If you're the body type that might favor this, try it out. All right, you guys, any other questions? Let's move into specific training. Let's grab some water first. One, two.